from Clarkston, Michigan, the greatest city in the world. It's the Jose Aliaga Show. Jose Aliaga knows everyone. Get to know him as he interviews some of the most fascinating people from the greater Independence Township area. And now, broadcasting from the studios at Clarkston High School, the home of the state champion wolves, here's Jose Aliaga. Welcome to the Jose Aliaga Show. Today, we have an exciting guest. Her name is Erica Russell. She's a soccer player, a teacher, and she's well known in soccer zone as a, one of the best midfield. She will pass the ball, and most likely 90% of that pass is usually a goal. So how are you doing, Erica? I'm doing great today. How are you, Jose? Good, good. Good, happy to be here. Thank you, thank you. A long drive? Uh, I live up in Goodrich, so it mm -hmm. is a little bit of a drive, but there's mm -hmm. no place gooder than Goodrich. <laughs> oh, good, good. Well, um, you know, uh, I met you at the, um, in the Grand Blanc area in the um, tournament, and we had some people, or another thing, we had people from Clarkston and from Goodrich. We have a, a good team, and that everybody talks about your ability to pass the ball, and so, now, I think those skills, I mean, I can see that you probably have been playing soccer for a while, right? Well, I look at soccer as a whole family thing. Mm -hmm. So my children play, mm -hmm. my husband's a coach. Oh. Um, back when I was in college, it was one of my jobs to work at the YMCA. Mm -hmm. And uh, through the YMCA, I coached the young guys. But really, those skills transfer all the way through. And really, soccer is a skill that transfers to life. Mm -hmm. You know, you're looking at soccer, you've got a goal, you're using other people, you're passing to other people to get there and get the goal, and that's kind of how life is. If you have a greater goal and you rely on other people to do it, I mean, that's what it's all about. And I'm just lucky because I have you to pass to. <laughs> Thank you. But you see, in our games, we, it's very difficult because it's also about not just, it's important to have the skill, but also it's about physical training. After two or three minutes, I'm kind of like, oh, oh, you know, stop, stop. I mean, I, I can see you are actually keep going. I mean, you probably run or do Yeah, stuff. actually, Goodrich, Goodrich is a wonderful community. It has mm -hmm. a running club. Oh. And so, actually, my kids and I are all part of the running club. We did four miles this morning. So. Oh, really? <laughs> we did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's nice. nice. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, it's good to have a, those clubs. We actually have a club here, too. With a lot of good friends of mine, every Saturday that we call the Clarkson Club, uh -huh. they call me to go at eight o'clock in the morning to get out, hey, go and run. It helps extra. It's helps. Uh, actually, I didn't show up for many weeks, as you see. That's why I don't run. That uh, much. Oh no! So guys, if you're watching this, I would try to be there next week for sure. <laughs> but you see, now your thing is gonna be playing the final very soon. So how you feel about that? Well, I'm very excited. I think we have a really, really strong team. Mm -hmm. I think our team works well together. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has a positive attitude. So win or lose, as long as we have fun, mm -hmm. then we've really won. It's true. And what is your opinion? You know, a while ago, we had the women's U.S. team. Yes. And they became the champion of the world. For most countries, it's a big deal. A lot of people in Michigan is still, you know, still getting there, you know. But uh, what do you think about that? I think it's phenomenal. I think that women's team just promotes soccer, and soccer is such a good thing for kids to be involved in. Mm -hmm. So the more publicity it can get, the better. And uh, wow, just to win it all and to have the women's team, mm -hmm. you know, win it all. I have a 13-year-old daughter, and she is so inspired um, by that team. She really has latched on to Alex Morgan as her favorite mm -hmm. player. And so when she plays, she has her pink, you know, pre wrap mm -hmm. there, just like Alex Morgan. And uh, my sister-in-law has ovarian cancer, so sometimes she'll switch it up and do a green one for ovarian cancer. And uh, I really think that those sports tie people together mm -hmm. and can be used to influence things that you've never thought could be mm -hmm. influenced. Oh, 
I see. And who is your favorite uh, soccer player from the U.S. team? Yeah, I'm going to say Alex Morgan. <laughs> Better than Hope Solo and... I know that Carly Lloyd got the goals. I know mm -hmm. that Hope Solo is an amazing keeper. Mm -hmm. um, but I really like Alex Morgan's play style and uh, You like Alex Morgan. Why? Why? Um, I think that when she goes out there, she leaves her heart on the field every time. Mm -hmm. um, I think that she premeditates and plans things through, and I think that's a lot of, uh, you know, soccer is thinking it through before you go, then getting on the field. I also think she's supportive of her teammates, and that's a huge part of soccer. And Alex Morgan is a midfield forward? Mm -hmm. She plays midfield. Midfield? Mm -hmm. Sometimes striker. Oh, yeah. sometimes. So he is, uh, you can actually... She can, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's really good. So it's your position, right? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, because you, you play in the midfield, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I see you up there, help me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how you learn how to pass the ball effective? I mean, that's uh, is one of your best skills up there and everybody talks about it. You uh, take a look where you want to go and it's, it's uh, pre-planned before the play happens. So before I get the ball, I look for where I want it to pass. So I already have in line, if I get the ball, here's where it's going to go. Mostly to Jose. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you give me a good pass. Last time we, we scored like four goals, right? Yeah, that I don't was, know, more, like uh, ten. <laughs> yeah, not ten. Yeah, I know, I know. I got, no, but the four, you give me four passes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully you can do that, to, you know, in Yeah, the hopefully in the finals. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I will try, and it's going to be difficult. So, in our team, I don't want to say names right now, but in our team, some people cannot score right now. What's going on with that? Do you think it's that shoes, maybe? Or maybe, maybe the shoes, maybe the practice, um, maybe the passion. Uh -huh, uh, yeah. Soccer is one of those addicting things where you just have fun and that fun fills you with passion and it fills you with drive and uh, you know you got to keep it fun and sometimes when it gets a little too serious uh, maybe that can affect the goal scoring too. That's yeah, true. You, you, you're right. I mean, you're right. Yeah, I don't have that passion, as you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have too much passion <laughs> for soccer. I, yeah, I, I love soccer. I played soccer since I was like, what, four? Four years old, and yeah. where are the different places you've played soccer? Uh, I play in Peru, in Spain for a little bit. I mean, Chile for Argentina, no professional, but playing different leagues or sure. things like France. And yeah, I, I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. yeah. How I, many countries is that? That's a lot of countries. That yeah, you here, play. I play yeah, here. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. You're an international soccer player. Well, yeah, I, I, I guess, but no, like, not professionally, but. But we, as you know, in Grand Blanc, we have really good soccer players. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, playing against, uh, I mean, easy team. I mean, we have teams that run the whole game. And if they don't have the skills, they have the physical training. And or if they don't have the physical training, they have the skills. But you get teams that have both, both. Yeah, have both sometimes. And, and this, it, it is, it, it, I think it's difficult. But also, let's change the subject. And. Oh, so you're a teacher? Yes. Mm -hmm. where, where, do you, where do you teach? I teach science, middle school science. Um, both sixth grade and eighth mm -hmm. grade has been my main focus for the past 13 years. Uh -huh. um, and we have a concentration um, in eighth grade on environmental science, uh -huh. uh, earth science, which is awesome because our my classroom really isn't just the four walls that I'm in. Mm -hmm. My classroom is really the community. So when we're studying rivers, we go out and we test the water in the Clinton River because that's part of our watershed. Um, and you know, when we're studying the stars, we put apps on our phone and mm -hmm. look up in the sky and find where the stars are. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just. It's, I love, I love teaching science. It's a big passion for me. Oh, um, where do you teach? Uh, at Ruther Middle School in Rochester. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a very uh, unique environment because it has all sorts of students that go there. We have very wealthy students that go there. Mm -hmm. We have economically disadvantaged students that go there. Mm -hmm. We have um, a multicultural mixing pot. It is just the most amazing place. If you wanted to take a picture of the world and put it in one building, that would be Ruther. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it's very diverse. Oh, wow. And um, most of the students, I mean, do, so what you're saying, you have also foreign students, correct? Mm hmm and most of them are Europeans, Africans, I mean? Um, mostly we have, uh, for our foreign, we have a larger like Asian population. Asian population, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. in Rochester, mm -hmm. oh, interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. Huh. 
And uh, do you have uh, kids in, uh, with learning disabilities as well? Yep, we have oh. uh, special needs students are included in the science classroom. Mm -hmm. um, so we have students that have all the way from, you know, their learning need is to be challenged more and to be accelerated more. And then we have others um, that are in that same classroom that need a little extra help um, or have you know specific needs. But it is such a caring environment. It feels like all of the students really work together for one learning goal and that everybody's there to learn. You know, We're mm -hmm. also a Title I building, so we have the at-risk students. Oh. Um, yep. And uh, so the at-risk students can be a challenge, but what I found is that when you show love first, then they respect you and love you back. So, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, it's important, uh, you know, to apply some methods that will help to improve education for sure. And I, I agree, when you show love, uh, you, you gain respect. That's, that's true. Because, you know, I'm a teacher too. I teach yes, in, yeah. And with Bloomfield and that, yeah, I, I can see, um, I mean, probably we have kind of similar Back Similar around because West Bloomfield, yeah. Is yours a diverse population too? Yeah, it, 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 it yeah, West Bloomfield it is. But, but I teach in a, a Jewish school, you know, Franco Jewish Academy, West Bloomfield. But I see when I go around or visit some other schools there, I see that they have a, a diverse, a lot of diversity in, uh, in West Bloomfield. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. So um, now back to. To, we're talking about soccer, and you, uh -huh. so we talk about a little bit of that. Who, uh, what team was probably the most, um, the most difficult game for USA? What team do you think challenged our team? Um, I thought that game against Japan. Uh, that was I liked watching it. Okay. Oh, because <laughs> we beat them. Challenging. <laughs> because, yeah, you scored like four goals yeah, in five you minutes. Know, right away. That was exciting. It was right. funny because we had the first part of it DVR'd and our daughter was texting us, have you seen that yet? It's like, don't ruin it. Because that was just, I mean, that was phenomenal. That was so much fun to watch. Um, and yeah. we played Japan, the previous World Cup, the final too, US-Japan, and we lost with them actually. And the game was really back and forth. Right. Now this one, I wasn't really uh, optimist that we're going to be scoring. I mean, somebody told me U.S. is going to score four goals in five minutes. I wouldn't believe it. It's I like, wouldn't believe it either. I think like, it's impossible because, you know, soccer games at that level are such low scoring. So to even have, you know, four A final. Goals. Yeah, <laughs> in a final. So maybe you think the previous game, U.S.-Germany was tougher? U.S. germany was a tougher game. It was a more competitive game. Um, right? Yeah. But it was... A lot of people were saying... If Germany beat US, they're gonna be the next champion, and then people say, "Oh, it's kind of like Germany is gonna be champion in men's and women's, and then both oh. World Cups." So people say, "I hope America, America can beat that the game," and then people were concerned because the German team have a really good team too. Yeah. But I think uh, Alex Morgan, uh, Hope Solo, yeah. early they they actually overcome by playing really, really hard the game, you know. Yeah, a lot of the soccer, don't you think, is mental too? And uh, mm -hmm. so I think maybe they had it in their mind mm -hmm. that this Japan team is going to be tough and they you know, mentally uh, found themselves just going at it with everything they had. True. It's true. It's, it's also, I think uh, what you just said is true, but also I think um, Previous interview, we were talking about when the team is happy, you have a positive energy, and everybody is laughing, good attitude. You want to go and win, but everybody is happy, everybody is commit like a family. Yes. You become actually like a family. Yeah. Then you get good results. Yeah. But this is an inside, you know, in some groups, in some soccer teams, sometimes, oh, I don't like that guy, or something like that. And that brings some negative energy. And that is something part of a small factor that can decide because some. some People during the game says, oh, I don't want to pass that ball to that guy. It happened because I, I, I see testimonies. Uh -huh. It happened before. But in our US, team, in our US team, you see more friendship, unite. They want to go and reach the goal yeah. as a team. Yeah. Not as a, oh, I'm better than you or something like that. No, they want to be as a team. Everybody wins. You know, we saw that in the final game. Um, when one of the captains subbed mm -hmm. out, instead mm -hmm. of taking the captain badge with her, she mm -hmm. took it off mm -hmm. uh, and handed it over. And so I thought that was really cool, and that you know definitely supports that. Yeah, no, it, it, it does. It does. I mean, you play soccer for a long time. I mean, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the games that you play, I remember what the score was six-one the first half, and everybody thought that oh, you guys done. I mean, you lose the first half six-one, 
I mean, everybody was like, oh, that thing is not going to come back. The second half is going to be even worse. Mm -hmm. And what happened? We came back. We came back. <laughs> six, six. You know, we came back. We came back. So <laughs> the point, but that's because we, the mentality, of course, and we can do it. Uh -huh. We never feel like, oh, no, this thing already has 6-1 and we don't know. We, we feel like we can do it. Right. And we were positive and we did it. My husband always starts the second half with, this is a fresh game, boys. Let's go. Let's get started. Fresh game. Halftime always starts zero again like it's the beginning of the game. So mm -hmm. I think that's a really good coaching mentality to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. The other one is uh, when if even if the first half you're winning one or two zero, uh -huh. you should tell everybody we still zero zero and we need to keep put keep the going. Same, keep going. Don't slow down because. Well, that, that be sort of happened. You know, we got tied and we <laughs> thought we're gonna have it. Yeah. We're gonna get it. We're on a roll and. Yeah. I think at that at, at that part was a physical training though. <laughs> oh yeah. I right. think right at the end. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was. But what was the most difficult game so far? for you? Um, there, were, there was one game a while back um, because it's a co-ed team that we're on now mm -hmm. and I was uh, up at the right hand side and there was one of their defenders coming out and it was a big man. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up against him and challenged him but I ended up uh, getting butted off the ball and I felt like every time I was in he was in and I gave it all I could but his physical stature was just more uh, than what I could do. So that was probably the toughest game for me um, oh, just I, yeah because of the nature of the mm -hmm. match up there. And in this season what is the most difficult game do you think? For this season uh, I think we're probably going into our most difficult game because the <laughs> most is on the line. The matchup is on the line, right. uh, you know, and, and so when you know you've got a championship on the line, you're like, okay, I still want to have fun, but I want to win. So. so how do you feel you're going to play the championship? How do you feel about it? Uh, I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be great. Like I said, we've got great people. We've got a good family. We've got a good attitude. So we've got what it takes to win. <laughs> yeah, you know, regardless the, the final score or whatever, we made it into the final. I mean, yeah. that's, that's uh, I think, that's uh, what it matters. I mean, winning or losing after all, we make it to the final. Not many teams can do that. I mean, and that I think um, for what I see and everything, I mean, we have a great team. We have a great team. And you know what? A lot of um, the people that are on the team are parents too, and mm -hmm. sometimes they bring their kids. And uh -huh. I just think it shows a really good mentality to your kids that playing soccer isn't just for the youth and that being in shape and being physically active and being healthy, mm -hmm. you know, that's a lifestyle um, that will keep you healthy for, for a long time. True, true. Hey, um, since we talk about soccer too, um, I want to just talk a little bit about politics. Um, you know what uh, Donald Trump and the women's U.S. team have in common? Donald Trump and the women's U.S. team, hmm, no? <laughs> Both of them know how to beat Japan. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yeah, there good. you go. Yeah. So you're Republican or Democrat? I am a Republican, yeah. Uh, do you pick already who's, who's going to be your best, uh, or who's, sorry, who's going to be your candidate in the Republican? nomination? I do not think that I have listened to enough of the facts yet, so I would consider myself still undecided for a party. I see, because it's 16 people. Yeah, it's a lot. And every week was coming one more, one more, and one more, and it, I just, I don't know. I, it's great, though, that so many people have ideas and inputs and, you know, different facets that they can add to it, so. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Donald Trump? Well, I like his hair. You like his hair? <laughs> really? You like his hair? Well, uh, I mean, his what? hair is fun to watch. How about that? Okay. <laughs> it's got a unique style all in and of right. itself. So you think maybe he doesn't look presidential because, or, or you, actually you like his hair, so maybe he looks presidential sure. for you. Well, I think that Donald Trump obviously has smart economical sense. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking economy, he's got it. Um, the USA is more than just an economy, though. Uh, you know, the laws are governing people and families, not just finances. And so I think that we need to have a candidate that can look at the whole big picture. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see. Okay. If. So you think um, a, a good president is most likely a governor instead of being a, a U.S. senator? I'm not saying a name, I'm just saying, you know, governor wrong state, the wrong budget, they have to deal with Senate 
and House representative from the state, you know? Right. They have to deal, pass legislation, all that. So some people believe they can have more experience to apply in Washington, D.C., since they're also going to be dealing with U.S. senators and U.S. Congress. So that way they can actually have the experience all right, ready to go, how to balance a budget, all that. What senators also work in, in, in Washington, they see bills, they put together bills, they oversee the budget as well. But management is more for governors. So it's up there some people that believe governors can be better presidents than senators. And since uh, the current president is a senator, a lot of people is disappointed on some of the policies having whatever happened in the last, you know. Right. Yeah. So what do you think? Well, I think whether they've been a governor or whether they've been a senator, I think it's about their beliefs and what they want and also the people that they have to buy into them and the people that they have supporting them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I look at a candidate, I look at, okay, who's also on their side? Who's supporting them and why are they supporting them? Mm -hmm. So I think that either a governor or a senator could do a good job depending on the views that they have at hand. That's not what you wanted to hear, was it? <laughs> no, that's good. I mean, no, it's good. You're good. You're good. Just for you know, guys, she's not running. I know. <laughs> she's not running. So I was asking a question because she's not running. Because <laughs> some people, hey, some people probably agree and say, that's a very good answer. <laughs> yeah, because now we have an outsiders too, the, which they are not senators. They are not governors, yeah. uh -huh. like Dr. Ben Carson. Right like uh, Donald Trump, businessman, and then uh, I think, who else is, uh, Carly Fiorina. Right. What about Carly? You hear a little bit about her? Um, I'm not, I'm not uh, well educated on sure. her beliefs. No, I understand. Uh, ben Carson, you hear the name before? I heard no? them in the candidacy. In the candidacy. <laughs> well, he's a doctor from Detroit and a lot of people like him. Just in the beginning when everybody started announcing, mm -hmm. Um, I see the polls, okay. Then I see the Facebook likes. And he has a lot of likes. And I was like, oh, okay. It looks like he has some following. You know, and I was impressed. I th believe that the Republican Party have a really good candidate. Yeah. I don't see anyone saying, oh, th he's going to be a bad president. No, I think they, they do. They do. And the Democrats, I, I know there's just four people. I, I was expecting more. Mm -hmm. And some people think Joe Biden may run. Do you like Joe Biden? Well, you know, I'm on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, uh, yeah, you're right. Right, right. 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 No, so. I have, you know, opinions. Some people say, oh, yeah, he's okay. But right, right. No, I understand. Yeah. I, I do. Uh, I know it's just uh, who's Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, O'Malley. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it. I think, um, you know, everybody gets the same vote, whether you're educated in politics or whether you're not educated in politics. Everybody gets one vote that counts. So I think the most important thing is to educate yourself on the candidates, you know, before you speak upon them. Like, for example, Hillary Clinton, she's a household name. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people may vote for her just because, oh, I know the name. And we've already had a Clinton administration where they may not know about the other candidates that are running or vying for hers or the other side of the ticket and what they stand for. So so you've been an inspiration. I'm going to research more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, no, you, you're absolutely right about it. But uh, what I've seen is when Hillary have interviews with the liberal media, the liberal media goes and asks him, what is your favorite color? What is your favorite food? What is your favorite um, store? Yeah. And when, you get, when they get somebody like Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, Jed Bush, they got the hard, toughest questions to mm -hmm. answer. And I don't think so, those other questions are fair. That's my opinion. And that's why they're making sure that Hillary is okay with easy, soft questions. Right. And the hardball questions come to the Republicans. It's what I feel the media is doing right now. I do feel that way. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> think about it, yeah. Because I, I believe also we have, uh, like, like Jed Bush have a name recognition. Yep. He done, he, he's done a great job in Florida with education, yeah. with everything. He, he always talk about solutions. He not just says, the, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to cut taxes. No, he says how, too. So it's Scott Walker. So it's everyone there. Right. So it's the part I like about these debates, because they give you an example how, not just saying, I will take care of it. I will do it. You know? Everybody can say they'll do it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know this uh, it's like slogan. You right, know? But, right. Uh, yeah, but they yeah, actually yeah. do it. <laughs> and yeah. how. Yeah. 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 I mean, is, is it true? Yeah. It, 
just a question. You have a friend up there that they call it the mayor of uh, yes, Goodrich. Yes, the what, mayor of Goodrich, and today is her that? birthday. Is birthday? <laughs> you want to say happy birthday? Happy birthday, mayor. So mayor wh Jamie. Wh why why they call it the mayor? I wonder. They call her the mayor because um, the the city of Goodrich really doesn't have a mayor. Oh, so. Um, but she is the mayor because of all of the wonderful things that she does for the community. She uh, runs the soccer program there. Okay. She uh, gets people into her home. She has four children, mm -hmm. um, and she connects with all of her friends' families. She organizes trips for the town. She's involved in the church there, um, which is newly named the River. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's just super actively involved in her community and if there was an election uh -huh. mayor jamie would get it <laughs> oh, what, what i think is because when she come yeah um she come with a huge group fan of, club uh, yes a lot of yes. people come to, to say i said so i didn't know or thing have a lot of follow-up yes and says, who is that is it the mayor it's of the goodrich. mayor of goodrich so i googled it this morning and says it's a mayor in goodrich it wasn't i says it's a township and it's a village too yes yeah so this is a why because it looks like the mayor of Goodrich because you got all this crowd and coming, you know? Yes, all the people would follow the mayor and yeah. she is well deserving of that title. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, interesting. So fun. Very interesting. Well, um, it was really fun to have you here. We'll have a good uh, um, talk. And hopefully, next time you come in here, we'll talk about how we win the championship. That sounds like a plan. I'm yeah. in for that. Yeah, <laughs> we need to win for sure, you know. <laughs> Well, May should pass the ball. <laughs> like, I will know, pass you know? the ball. I will pass like, the I, ball. I can I score the many goals. You yeah, betcha. Can, yeah, it's going to be a tough game. But uh, well, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having yes, me today. Absolutely. So thanks. Um, well, that's all for today. Um, if you want to be in our show, we're happy to have you. But please contact us on our Facebook page. It's a, uh, we have a Facebook page. You just go and search and go the Jose Aliaga show and you can write it by, by you know Facebook email or chat whatever you feel comfortable or also you can call us at 248-736-7163 if you have a very positive a good comment please feel free to write it I may be happy to read it and reply but if you have a negative comment don't write anything Thank you so much and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.